Hello, welcome once again to Election Watch. Uh, your only, uh, the only scientific analysis program of Ghana's election brought to you by your election command center in collaboration with the Governance Research Bureau. This is where political science meet with statistics. Uh, once again, Dr. Kwame Asasanti and Dr. Ezekiel Norte, the mathematics genius, are here to give you what you have been waiting for. That is the winning formula uh, for the elections. This is what we do right here on uh, your election watch. As we promised earlier today, we're bringing you a simulation of how to win in the uh, swing and stronghold regions. Remember that uh, this program is not about which party has the upper hand here or there, but it is about predicting the actual figures, exactly how much uh, votes will be amassed in which areas in order to aid in campaign planning for uh, the various political parties going into the 2020 elections. This is your election watch and when we return we will uh, introduce our guests and we continue with today's program. Stay with us. Right, welcome back. Now, as uh, we told you, uh, we promised today we're demonstrating a simulation of how to win the election in uh, swing and stronghold areas. And I told you that, remember that this is not just about uh, this party has the upper hand here or the upper hand there. It's about predicting the actual figures, exactly how much vote is needed to be amassed in these areas uh, to aid in campaign uh, planning. This is your election watch and this is where political science meet statistics. Uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, Dr. Ezekiel Norte and Dr. Asa Kwame Asasanti, welcome and thanks very much once again. Uh, let me you. come to you, uh, Dr. Asasanti, before we watch our profile video about the swing and stronghold areas, I need you to briefly explain to our viewers what to expect from today's simulation. Yeah, thanks, uh, Steve. What we are looking at today is that we are, want to give the various means by which the two main political parties can win uh, in strongholds mm. and the, the, the swing areas. And what we, we are going to do is to give them the various strategies as to how to get there. Mm. Yes. Dr. Ezekiel Norti, anything to add? Yes. Um, so basically, uh, we're looking at uh, three compartments. How each of the main political parties perform in their strongholds. And in their opponents, mm. main opponents stronghold, and in the swing regions. Mm. Yes. Interesting. So this is your election watch. And let me remind you that this show is very interactive. And uh, so we'll get people join us via Zoom later in the show. And you can also join the uh, conversation by the hashtag TV3 election watch on uh, all our social media handles. Let's now uh, take a look at that brief video of today's subject. In every national elections, political parties contesting have their stronghold regions which are critical to their success. There are also swing regions, usually referred to as the deciders, which the parties pay much attention to. In Ghana, the two dominant political parties, the NDC and NPP, have their strongholds, but with a voting system where the winner must receive more than 50% of the votes cast, the parties do not take chances. In all the seven presidential elections held in the previous 10 regions, the NDC has won in four, Volta, Northern, Upper East and Upper West, making them the party stronghold regions, while the MPP has its strongholds, being Ashanti and Eastern regions. This has left the Bonohafo, Central, Greater Accra and Western regions as swings. These swing regions every two elections shift from one party to the other and one interesting characteristic of these regions is the fact that the party they vote for eventually wins the presidential elections. With the creation of six more regions, the dynamics have changed as there are now seven swing regions from the previous four. Northeast region, according to election watchers, 
would be 50-50 for both NDC and NPP, while Northern Region would see the NDC dominate, but the NPP could make some inroads. Savannah Region remains a stronghold of the NDC. The creation of three regions in the Bono Hafo region has also changed the dynamics as experts say the NPP could win in Bono and Ahafo, but NDC could capture Bono East. In Western, election watchers say NPP could dominate in Western and NDC Western North. The Volta and Oti regions remain strongholds of the NDC, even though election watchers say the NPP could improve on its fortunes in Oti, but no more than 25%. The central and greater Accra regions in December would be competitive as usual as they continue to swing. They are swing regions and even when one party wins, the margins are usually not so wide. In 2012, uh, NDC won by got 50% plus in both central and western. Then MPP, which lost in 2012, what 40% plus, 40% plus. Interestingly, in the last election, it turned the other way around. So, Greater Accra and Central will be very, very competitive. And effectively, there are now the only two strange regions left because this other two has been dismembered in a way. Evelyn Tinkma, TV3 Accra. So that was a brief video of uh, uh, Ghana's swing and stronghold areas. Uh, so uh, that was the summary that uh, Dr. Sasanti, I need you to, uh, before we move into the data analysis segment of today's program, to briefly tell us what the format of the simulation is expected to be. Yeah, we are going to see the various scenarios. Mm. And when I say scenarios, what do I mean? We want to see the means by which a party can cross the 50% mm -hmm. plus one threshold. And that will give various scenarios. Where a party crosses, that becomes the, the strategy for that party to employ during the next election. And uh, Dr. Zikionati, how important will this simulation be? I mean, as NDC and MPP and other political parties and all stakeholders are watching us, how crucial should this be for them and for us also? and for the audiences who are engaging us in order to make informed decisions for the elections. It is very crucial in the sense that you need to know where your strengths are, where you need to deepen your campaign to show up your votes. You need to do that. Do it well in your own string, uh, stronghold and do it well in your opponent's stronghold and as well as the swing region and victory will be yours. Right, so Dr. Ezekiel Norte and uh, Dr. Kwame Asasanti are joining us. They are our geniuses, uh, political science and mathematics geniuses, to help us unravel the data. So we'll take a break here, and when we return, Dr. Ezekiel Norte will actually be taking us through the data and science of uh, today's simulation. Stay with us. This is your election. Welcome back to the Election Watch, where political science meets statistics. This program is brought to you by your Election Command Center in collaboration with the Governance Research Bureau. Today, our spotlight is on the stronghold and swing areas of uh, Ghana's elections under the Fourth Republic. And uh, let me remind you that this show is about the actual figures to be expected from uh, these areas to uh, aid campaigns. So let's quickly get into, into it, Dr. Dr. Norte and Dr. Sasanti. Let's set the ball rolling, uh, starting with you, Dr. Norte. Right. Thank you very much. Yes, um, today we will be looking at performance in stronghold as against swing regions. So we have a butterfly in the middle on the left-hand side of the butterfly shows the stronghold of NPP. On the right-hand side of the butterfly is the NDC's stronghold. Mm. 
each party is supposed to amass or gather enough votes to be able to cross the 50 plus 1 vote. So when we look at MPP's stronghold, if both NDC and MPP mm. perform at their average, then they have only 69,000 votes to go for, which is for the other parties. Mm. And so we are saying that let's assume that scenario one, NDC and NPP would increase their respective average votes by 30,000. So, so, so it informs the, the, the figure 30,000. So that if, for example, in this scenario, scenario one, if NDC and NPP both increase their respective average votes by 30,000 in NPP strongholds, then the indications are clear here. But what informs the 30,000? Yes. What informs the 30,000 is when you look at NDC's uh, performance, it's about 1 million votes. Mm in MPP stronghold. MPP gets about 2.1 million votes. And then you will be left with the others, which is about 69,000. Mm. Mm. So the assumption is that both NDC and MPP will accrue their averages. Mm. If they are to increase those numbers, then they are eating into the other votes, which is the 69,000. Interesting. So into the 60,000, they share 30,000, 30,000. So that informed that choice. So once NDC and MPP both increase their average votes by 30,000, you would see that NDC's average of 48.96 shoots up slightly to 49.23. MPP 46.58 also shoots up to 46.85. Both of them would not be able to crush the 50 plus one vote. So it means that scenario one will not assist any of them. Anyone. It will not be beneficial to any we, of the two parties if they seek to win. We have said mm. that as soon as you are working at your average, you are pushing the election to a second round. Mm. When you go beyond your average, you are close to what? The finish line. Interesting. When you go down below your lowest point, you are out of the election. And this one, we realized that adding 30,000 to each, nobody was able to, or no party was able to cross the 50% plus one. Interesting. Threshold. So I, I do hope that uh, both the NDC and the MPP and the other parties are watching these, these uh, figures very closely yeah. because they will, uh, they will underpin the figures we get when we go to December 2020. Yeah. Dr. Nock, exactly. let's continue. So let's move on to scenario two. In scenario two, our assumption is that the same, we are looking at the mm. same stronghold, but this time we are saying NDC decreases by 30,000, MPP increases by 30,000, which in, means in that an MPP stronghold. Because it's an MPP stronghold. Mm. And this is a more likely event. When that happens, NDC drops to 48.68%. That translates into. Um, uh, national like some 5.29 plus mm. and MPP moves up slightly 46.85 and they also move up to a national of um, almost about 5 million votes it means that both of them this scenario will not help them mm. when we say will not help it means that this scenario will not produce, produce a winner, a winner an outright one. winner for any of the two and parties. And it's not a good strategy mm. for any of the for two parties. For any of the two parties. Mm. No, it's not. Interesting. Great. Right. So, scenario three. If average votes of both NDC and NPP decrease by 30,000 in NPP stronghold, this is a very unlikely event. But yeah. we want to see how that translates. So it's, un it's unlikely because in an MPP stronghold, stronghold you do not expect that they will decrease by 30,000. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, NDC also decreasing by 30,000. NDC's own may be possible, but not with MPP, in MPP stronghold. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, then it is the other parties that is going to benefit. It means that people are dissatisfied with NPP, both NPP and NDC, so they decide to vote for the other parties. So you see that there are 69,000 turns into 129,000. Mm. And it translates into a final uh, percentage point of 5.02 from 
4.47. So they benefit, and the others will not. They will not. I mean, typically what it means is that the other parties, which, whose numbers relatively have been small, small. over all the periods we've had elections, exactly. Uh, become crucial here if there is a, a, is a runoff. But this is a runoff situation. Yeah. It doesn't favor a win for it either it of the major parties, NDC exactly. or MPP. Exactly. Right, so that's exactly. scenario three. Exactly. Let's move on to scenario four. With scenario four, we're saying that if average votes of NDC increase by 30,000 and that of MPP decrease by 30,000 in MPP stronghold, this mm -hmm. is also a, an unlikely event. Mm -hmm. But we need to find out what that would, would do in would terms do. of numbers. So when that happens, NDC moves up slightly and MPP drops up down slightly to 46.30%, with other parties remaining 4.4%. Mm. And this would also not produce a first round victory. So it will not help any of the parties. Mm. Very interesting revelations. Uh being coughed up by the data we have. And over here, you see that the smaller parties, uh, if you are able to uh, deplete their votes or work against what they will get eventually, then you are likely to what, push mm. the figures of whichever party is winning across the 50% plus one threshold. Mm. Yeah. So always the target is the smaller party. Interesting, Dr. Nante. Yes. So scenario five is a scenario that works in NDC's stronghold. We've, we've now exhausted the scenarios in MPP stronghold. We're moving into the scenario of NDC's stronghold. Here, we're saying that if both NDC and MPP increase their respective vote by 115,000, what will happen? In NDC stronghold. In NDC stronghold. And I'm sure Steve would ask why... 115,000. Exactly. <laughs> We're doing that because when you look at the right-hand side of the first butterfly, mm. the total number of votes available for others or other parties is about 230. Mm. So our assumption is that if the two major political parties can take the 230. Uh, 230,000 votes and share among themselves, then they will get 115 each. Interesting. That will be very and significant. That, that went into this computation. When that is done, it translates into an outright win for NDC. So this slide is very, very critical for both NDC and MPP. But and it works better for the NDC. NDC. And this is their strategy that they must look at critically and factor it into the calculation. Mm. Yes. Great. So we move to scenario six. Scenario six. If average votes of NDC decrease by 115 and that of MPP increases by 115. So in the same scenario. NDC in stronghold. NDC's stronghold. Then there will be a neck-to-neck -neck tie. Exactly. And there you see that NDC's 48.96% drops to 47.9. MPP's 46 also increases to 47.63. But this would not cause an outright, an outright win. win. Either this for the NDC exactly. or for the MPP. Exactly. So it means that this will not work. Scenario 7. If average votes of both NDC and MPP decrease by 115,000 in NDC stronghold, it means that this amount of 300,000 is going in for the other parties. And when it does that, the other parties would increase to 460,000. And their average score would be 6.58 nationally. And both NDC and NPP would fall short of their initial averages, respectively 47.9 for NDC, 45.52 for NPP. And this will not work. This will, this will not produce a win. When you look at these two, it tells you that the smaller parties, as soon as you talk about the swing and strongholds, they do not matter at all. Mm. They have no constituencies. They have mm. no readings, so to speak. Mm. Great. Scenario 8. If average votes of NDC 
increases by 115,000. And that of MPP decreased by 115,000. It's a straight win. It's a straight win for the for NDC. NDC. So it's a much straighter win. They should forget about everything and work towards consolidating their average by 115,000. In their stronghold. In their stronghold. Maintain their position in the swing and the opponent's strong area. They win. What it means is that you should be able to what, get your average performance right. You should be able to win in your swing, uh, your stronghold. And you should be able to work very well to improve your performance in your in open, in opponent's in what, stronghold. And that's the winning form. And that, that is it. <laughs> that is it. Right. So, so this is scenario eight. eight. And is this feasible? Is this, I mean, is it a scenario that has produced wins in Ghana in the past since 1992? Yes. This is very feasible. Hmm. If NDC consolidates their lead in their stronghold, mm -hmm. it's a straight win for them. It's a straight win for them. Scenario nine. If both NDC and NPP increases their respective average votes by 90,000 in swing regions, mm -hmm. here we've now changed the dynamics yes. to the swing. Now we're saying that both the NDC and MPP have some averages. NDC amasses about 2.5 million. MPP amasses 2.3 million. So, and the others, 186. So, 186,000. We are saying 90,000 for MPP, 90,000 for NDC. It's a total of what? 180,000. So, they deplete the others to 6,000. A palpable 6,000. And here again, it doesn't reflect in a win. Mm. And I'll try to win for any so of the parties. So this also push to a runoff. So it pushes the thing still to a runoff. Scenario 10. 10. Here, we're saying that NDC's average vote decreases by 90,000. MPP increases by 90,000. So let's see the dynamics. When that happens, NDC drops in the national average to our 48.13 MPP increases to 47.40, but it doesn't produce. And still a win. doesn't get an outright win. It doesn't produce a win. Scenario 11 NDC increases by 90,000. MPP decreases by 90,000. It still doesn't produce a win. Mm. It does mean that the dynamics to win uh, really, really uh, does get complicated exactly. and complex. It means that. Ex exactly. You and you need a combination mm. of these. Mm. Scenario 12. So, so, so let's establish, really, it's necessary for us to establish for uh, our viewers who just joined us that this is uh, data for swing regions. Swing regions. We've, we've been able to uh, finish off the scenarios, scenarios for, for uh, strongholds, and, and now we're dealing with uh, swing regions. Exactly. So this is uh, scenario 12. Yeah, so scenario 12. Scenario 12, average votes of NDC decreases by 110, and uh, MPP increases by 450. What this means is that MPP is going to capitalize on this 110 in addition to increasing theirs mm. by depleting uh, the vote base for the other parties. And that will show them up to 450,000. In that case, it's a straight win for MPP. So this is the so the, this the, is the, their the winning formula. formula. This is their so, winning formula. Yeah. To, uh, to, for the NDC to decrease by 110 and the MPP thousand. increase by 450,000. 450, I mean, if we look at the difference between 110 and 450,000, it does mean that MPP at each time need to work twice harder. Harder. And the reason is simple. Over the years, if you look at from 1992 up to 2016, we have conducted seven elections. NDC has won four mm. and MPP three. So you realize that there is a gap mm. that you need to fill. And mm. remember, this is just a template. Mm. There are other qualitative variables that, that go to work, yes. uh, explain the election dynamics, and which include the economy, which include infrastructure messages, and which include health and the rest of Education it. and the rest of the indicators. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Dr. Yeah. Ezekiel Norte. And so, Dr. Sasanti, I want you to uh, give a general overview of these uh, scenarios in strongholds and swing regions, which we have just seen as before we take a quick break. Yeah, when we say uh, swing regions, we are talking about uh, certain characteristics of certain regions. One, people who have party tradition, 
that they go to those regions or they are there and they vote according to certain party mm. traditions. Mm. Two, there are other factors, such as the ones I've said, the economy, uh, health, um, you know, education and whatnot. And depending on the things that affect their lives, they vote along those lines. And that's why we say they are swing. They gravitate towards issues that affect their very survivor. And uh, these things are the things that determine the choices of voters in such areas. And that is why the definition is like that. All right, uh, Dr. Uh, Kwame Asasanti and Dr. Ezekiel Norti, our experts uh, today. This is Election Watch, where political science meets with uh, statistics. I remember that later on in the show, we'll be getting uh, some viewers joining us to ask uh, some questions of us, and we'll uh, pass the questions off to uh, Dr. Kwame Asasanti and Dr. Ezekiel Norti. We'll take a break, and when we return, we'll move to the next segment where uh, we will be looking actually at the winning formula. Stay with us. This is uh, Election Watch brought to you by your Election Command Center. Right, so welcome to Election Watch, uh, where political science meets statistics. Election Watch is brought to you by the Election Command Center in collaboration with the Governance Research Bureau. This is where we get interactive, and uh, right now we're being joined on the show by E.D. Uh, Mohayuddin, who is aide to the MPP uh, General Secretary, who is joining us uh, with some uh, questions of his own thanks very much sir uh, thanks for joining us so what what are what are your questions for dr sasanti and dr ezekiel norte okay um, um thank you very much i i i want to i want them to first and foremost um let us know what yastic um is used to measure what constitutes a stronghold of a, a political party in terms of the votes how much votes does a political party need to get in a particular region to qualify for the region to qualify as, as, as a stronghold? Does it have to be, say, 70% um, plus? And, and how much consistent should that be before, the, uh, I mean, in terms of the number of times, the number of elections the political party consistently gets that quantum of vote from a particular region for that region to constitute a, a stronghold, properly so called? And then that, that, that aside, I, I, because I'm asking this against the backdrop of the fact that when you look at the traditional uh, regions that we say are NDC strongholds, um, the, 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 the likes of Volta and, 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 and Savannah, currently I'm able to say that there are only three or four regions that you can comfortably say are NDC strongholds in that um, when, for instance, when you pick voter, that everybody knows consistently the party gets beyond 70, 80, sometimes even 90 percent. Right. But when you look and then Savannah, but beyond that, when you look at the other regions, the MPP has made significant evil in, 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 in these regions and all the other regions, greater Accra, Western, Central, and, and all of that. So, strictly speaking, when you are looking at strong votes for, for political party, based on the formula. The, the panelists would give as what should be used as the barometer for determining what constitutes stronghold. Right. I am unable. I think it, it is almost impossible to suggest that the NDC can comfortably say they have more than uh, three or four regions right. as their stronghold. Right. Because mm. all the other regions, northern region, the NDC has about, the, before it was split, we, we, we had a significant number of, I, I think almost uh, right. 40, 50 in favor of the NDC. So in that case, you may not call Northern Region an NDC stronghold traditionally. Why, that's... So I thought for both that region and maybe Savannah, and so I just want to know that to start with. Then moving forward, um, and uh, hello, am I, am I on the You are, you are still live. Yeah, yes. let's hear you. Mm. The, other, the other concern uh, in connection to this is that when you look at the, the last election, um, I think some the 2008 election, that is how come the MPP having won in just two regions, we were still able to, the MPP was able to push the elections into a second round. Right. So what uh, it means is that this uh, stronghold team may not necessarily be uh, uh, 
the case uh, because the perception is that uh, uh, some regions, the more you win regions, then so for the NPP, right? Win uh, the uh, regions, you may win it, just to it, it, I think, I think and, your and question, go ahead and win the general election. I think but your question has simple. your question is clear, region, which is our uh, what you want to call our traditional stronghold. If one constituency in Ashanti region, if, if you take uh, Kwabre East, which has a voter uh, population of over 150 or 60,000, Kwabre East, together with um, Kofum, uh, Ufori Kofum constituency alone, is more than the entire voter region combined. Right. Uh, uh, Edi, your, your, your question, your so, question uh, is clear. Your question has been heard. I, I thank you very much for calling through. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take the question now. And Dr. Izgionotti and Dr. Uh, Sasanti uh, will answer. answer. So, 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 no, you can stay on. You can stay on for, for them to answer this question. And then you ask another one so that we can okay, 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 uh, we okay, get okay, to okay. address it. So, uh, the questions were clear. I'm sure Dr. Izgionotti, you heard him. So, uh, let's try and answer his question. Great. So, uh, 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 Mr. Eddie was actually saying, the, he, he was speaking the same language in a different context. Uh, the model we used, we define our stronghold as consistently winning that uh, region. That region. Consistently winning that region. So NDC Over has been consistently, consistently winning the winning voter region, those, consistently uh, winning, winning the Upper uh, East exactly. and Upper West, and consistently winning, winning the North. Exactly. So it's fair to extrapolate so from to that, extrapolate that, that, that these that are strongholds. Mm. Be that as it may, MPP can make inroads. NDC can also make inroads in uh, MPP's stronghold. Mm. Remember, if he had watched the first episode, yes. we did say that Though MPP had only two strong uh, uh, regions in their stronghold, mm. two regions, the quantum the of votes, uh, the and Ashanti, mm -hmm. the quantum of votes there far uh, outweigh far outweigh the quantum of votes in the four regions that has been tagged and 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 this is strong stronghold. Mm. So he was saying the same thing, actually. Mm. Mm. Say the same. So it is. So if you heard, if you heard, so what? What the definition is simple: that if this region has been consistently won by a political party, then it becomes a stronghold. So uh, I hope you you are satisfied with the answers. Uh, let's hear your second question. No, no. Uh, does it matter? No, just just in relation to the first question, does it matter mm -hmm. the, 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 the the number of uh, votes that the, the party consistently secured? I'm asking this because, for instance, when you pick a, a region yeah. like um, a mm -hmm. northern region which traditionally has been christened and this is stronghold. In the last elections, in terms of the parliamentary, we're almost at par. I think they're just leading us by just about two seats. So can we comfortably say that the northern region, uh, prior to uh, it being split, still really and truly was an NDC stronghold? I'm not sure you can say it's that. But a stronghold it? should be something you can tell confidence, split. comfortably, that yes, this is a, a stronghold. Of, of the political party, not when right. you're winning a, a region by say 50 something percent or 60 percent, and if you call that region so good, I, I'm not sure statistically. Right, so that's fair. They 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 will they will address that. that. We're, we're, I, I also want to uh, mm. uh, want your panelists to establish the 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 the, the, the tourism or otherwise of this uh, 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 this perception. I mean, there's this claim that. Uh, there are certain regions. Once you win the regions, so practically you are, you are, you are, you are, you are more or less you won the elections. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. it's been the point has been made that region like central right. region, western region, and 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 and, and whether first of all, I want to establish whether it is it is really the case, right. and, and what accounts for that? How come once the political party wins? Central region is the consistency since 1996 or 1992 when we started this fourth Republican dispensation. So I want them to speak to that and, and, and how what is really accounting for, for that sector. Once the party wins central region or with greater crowd, automatically the party has won the general election. Right, it is. We're it grateful. That's the mm. sense. Can they do, uh, give us some meaning to this uh, 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 belief or whatever, whether factual or otherwise? I just. If they can speak to that, and 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 then, then yeah. that, that that would be good. So essentially, that, that's the other question that I, I want to uh, right. use your your panel. Well. Thank you. Speak to that.
Thank you extremely. We're grateful uh, for joining us. Edi Mohaideen is aide to the MPP's uh, general secretary. So uh, his questions, uh, I think if I could yeah. sum up yeah. his question, what he wants to say is whether the true is there is any reality in the truism that if a party wins a particular region, then they automatically win the general elections. But we haven't said that mm -hmm. on our program. We no, haven't backed that with any yeah, Steve, mm -hmm. the issue is very simple. If you go through the simulation, we tell you that when you, you even win all your votes in your stronghold, you can cross the 50% plus one. Yes. You need some performance in the swing regions, as well as your opponent what? stronghold. Mm -hmm. As so, well as get some votes from the other parties. From other parties. So you realize that win. that is not true. Mm -hmm. It's just a normal saying that goes around without any scientific proof. The scientific proof is the scenario we have worked yeah, we, people through. We, mm. And you realize that it's not possible. Mm. Uh, the other thing he talk about that, uh, you know, when you see uh, swing, um, he has a difficulty with the, our definition of swing. Swing, yeah. Uh, we are not looking at 2016 election alone. We are looking at elections from 1992, close to 2016. Mm. So when you put them on the average, mm. it gives you a certain word, pattern. Mm -hmm. And that pattern defines which uh, regions constitute what? The swing. So mm. it's not that simplistic. It goes beyond what he has in mind. Yes, mm. he has a case, but that it goes beyond mm. what, he goes beyond what he has in yes. mind. So we 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 we'll be going to the winning. And form. then he also asked a question about why is it that the 2008 Nana Kufuadu was able to win in Easting and uh, uh, Ashanti reading, and he was able to what, push the, sec the election for a second round. We have said it here that the MPP stronghold are uh, what uh, Eastern reading and Ashanti yes, reading, right. and there the the the, the 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 number of votes there far outweighs the NP NDC's what? Strongholds in the four mm. regions that we have talked about. We're, we're, we're so talking. when you work, uh, MPP is able to work to the maximum or the average in that area. What it means is that you are pushing the election for a second round. We have told you that you can never win the election when you, you, your stronghold, you perform so well and you are not able to what, get higher uh, results in other areas. Or you are pushing the election you for a second round. solely on the so numbers coming nah, from no, the strongholds. No, no. You Dr. need to go beyond your average. Dr. Isaac, you cannot say anything you want to add to uh, this one. Yes. So, uh, we, we're saying that um, uh, we are at the same wavelength as he is thinking. However, he is only using 2016. We are using all the data set. And our definition goes by what the data is informing right. us to see. Right. Dr. Zikinotti, uh, let, let's get, we, we're getting another uh, caller on the line uh, to ask his question. Uh, Gideon Ni Tete, Tete is with uh, Stranek, Executive Director of Stranek, is a, a political think tank. So uh, thanks for joining us. So what will your questions be? Thank you very much. Uh, well, my first question is that, um, well, if indeed the people of this country have lost faith in a certain political party. Uh, do you think that the, the, the strategies that you want to bring to bear when it comes to political parties will actually work? Mm. And my second question is that polycracy mm. is actually growing up in, in, in our political system. Now, if there become more or less like bread and butter issues, then you can attest to the fact that even the delegates conferred by the real political party, it was based on the highest bidder. And so, in this right, we know clearly that if indeed the delegate can take money based, can, can vote based on high, then it's actually a microcosm of what's actually going to happen in the general election. Right. So, are we considering monocracy? We have to accept <laughs> the fact that monocracy will play a key role because of how the delegates' conference have won. Right. Are, we, are the strategies also having put into consideration the monocracy that is going in a political system? So far, this between the All right, thank, thank you very much. I uh, do hope that you stay on and uh, hear the answer to the questions. I mean, he has introduced questions that do not fall within the uh, quantitative data mm -hmm. we're working with, which really goes to more qualitative data we don't control mm -hmm. until yeah. but I want to the ground. Yes, yeah. so uh, Dr. Asa Kwame Asa Asante. Yes, uh, what he's saying is that apart from the quantitative data we are talking about, are there any qualitative figures or variables that will change the dynamics? 
and he's right. Mm -hmm. uh, I did say earlier on that you need to consider the economy, how well you can manage it. People want to see your strength in that area before they give you votes. Bread and, and then issues. people also want to see how far you have performed in terms of infrastructure development. It's one of the considerations that comes on board when you are looking at voter choices. Not only that, people want to see how you've been able to address the issue of corruption head on. Remember, we have tried to work against corruption over the years, but we have not been able to deal with it head on. People want to see how feasible is it uh, to handle this, and then everybody gets fine. Then people also want to look at employment opportunities for young people who have finished school and they are looking for jobs. And these and other ones, others, what he said belong to what, uh, that category, others. There are some you can what, put them into these broad categories, about 14. But beyond that, people can what, put money in, monocracy, come and buy your vote. But these things are very insignificant. Mm. Uh, scientifically, it has proven beyond doubt. Sometimes also, depending on our present circumstances, if you look at today, the, the COVID that we find ourselves in, right, is not going to be used as a variable against the NDC, but rather the MPP, how they manage this one. The way they manage and manage it well, when we are in crisis, and it's a function of a party's word, performance. If the people believe that the government has done so well in managing COVID, as compared to other countries where people are dying, they are going to leverage on this, and this will put the party in a good state. And these are the other factors that he's talking about. Right, Dr. Ezekiel, not anything yeah. you want to add to Same that. That's yeah. fine. So, Q, thank you extremely uh, for uh, joining in with your calls and your questions. This is still Election Watch. It's brought to you by Election Command Center in collaboration with the Governance Research Bureau. We'll take a break. And when we return, uh, the, our guests, Dr. Kwame Asasanti and Dr. Ezekiel Norte, will be running us through the winning formula. Stay with us. Welcome back to Election Watch, where political science meets statistics. Election Watch is brought to you by uh, your election command center in collaboration with the Governance Research Bureau. Now, uh, Dr. Sasanti, uh, our viewers and Ghanaians, uh, heads of political parties, uh, we're all waiting for the winning formula uh, in swing and stronghold. So, what will the winning formula be? Uh, the winning formula... We are looking at things that will enable the political parties to cross the 50% mm. plus one threshold. And this is simply the winning formula. Mm. You need to first have performed so well in your st strong and swing uh, regions. And in addition to that, you need to be able to what, get more votes in your opponent's stronghold. And once you are able to get this, uh, you are good to go. Right, so let's demonstrate that on uh, our, our chat. Uh, uh, Dr. Ziganote right. will be doing Thank that, yes. yes. Great. So, um, we present two folds. Winning formula for NDC. For NDC to win, they need to do the following. One, they should maintain their average votes in MPP's stronghold. Their average is about 1 million votes. They should maintain it. They should maintain it. Mm. They shouldn't go below that. They go below that, it spells doom. Mm. Two, they should maintain their average votes in the swing regions, which is 2.5 mm. million. And here they need 2.5 plus 2 .5 in their swing regions in order to They need to, win. to at least stay afloat this mm. figure. Three, they need to increase the average votes in their stronghold of 1.7 by an additional 115,000. Mm. And they are good to go home and dry. They have won the elections. Mm. Interesting, in right? So with this, there is no, uh, no two ways about that. There, there are no runoffs. Straight no. win for NDC. Straight win for NDC. But we have said that this is a template. This, this is a qualitative is. one. Uh, qu sorry, quantitative yeah. data. The qualitative data will come in when as, you look at we other that. variables, mm. economy, uh, you know, corruption, and whatnot. But on paper, something to guide them to be able to gain the maximum votes mm. uh, in order to add the qualitative 
uh, figures so that they will be able to win the election. They need to satisfy these conditions. Once they're able to do that, they will be able to what? Uh, cross the finish line uh, successfully. Interesting. So winning formula for NDC. What's NDC. next? Great. So let's look at winning formula for NPP. For NPP to win, they need to do the following. They should maintain their average votes in their stronghold. Their yes. average vote is 2.1 million. They should maintain that. Or do better. Two, they should maintain the average votes in NDC stronghold. They, are, they average around 630,000. They should keep afloat. Or do better. Or do better. Then finally, they should increase their average votes of 2.3 million in the swing regions by an additional 450,000. They are home and dry. Mm. So, so this is a trade-off. I mean, I know that we're looking at winning formulas for NDC and MPP. So is there an in-between? For example, NDC does well in two indicators, doesn't do well in the third. MPP does well in one or two indicators, doesn't do well in the rest. Will there still be a winning formula? You see, because they are all... Uh, it's a competition uh, between the two of them getting to the seat by using the same voter population. Once one of them is doing well in two or more of the indicators, the other is doing worse in two or more of the indicators. In other words, in other words, so, in other so, words you see. can perform. One party will not perform, but other party will perform very well. Mm. So that when you have one party performing very well, the other one obviously will not be doing well. Aha. Aha. Yeah. It's like a scale. Yeah. Once you put more load in, you will go down the more. In other words, you are doing well. But if you, you, you are not doing well, obviously you are out. And remember, we have set what, three conditions. One, you need to what, maintain your average. Two, once you perform below your average, you are off. You need to be able to what? Compete strongly in your opponent's what some vote, mm. and get some votes. Mm. Once you're able to do that, and then you need to be able to what win and get your average in the swing. Once you do that, you are good to go. You are good to go, Doctor mm -hmm. Zikio Norte and uh, Doctor Sasante. Grateful for this winning formula. So I'm Stephen Antti, and it's been a very interesting edition of Election Watch, uh, which was brought to you by Election command center and collaboration with the governance research bureau next week we will go to the western region and uh, put a spotlight there in our election wars thanks for your time and join us again next week for another interesting edition